Hey guys, what's up? It's Miles here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how you can make a free profile picture for sites like YouTube, Twitter, Discord, or really whatever site you want to use it for. If you guys end up enjoying the video, then please hit that like button because it really does help the channel grow. And it also lets me know that you guys want to see more videos like this, so then I might upload some more tutorials like this in the future. But yeah, other than that, let's finally get on with the video. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is head over to photop.com. I will have a link for it on the screen right now. And what this is, is basically a free version of Photoshop, but it's completely online based. And what I mean by that is that you basically will be able to use Photoshop but directly from like your web browser whether it's like Google Chrome or like Internet Explorer if you're still on that for some reason or really whatever you're using right so anyways once you are on photop.com just hit new project and once you do that you'll see this new window appear and right away all you have to do is just change your width and your height to 500 and I don't think it defaults to that but like right away so you might have to like backspace what's already there and just type in 500 manually so once you do that you're really just good to go all you have to do is just make sure that your background is on transparent and you can do that by just clicking on this and just clicking transparent and then from there just hit create and you should be good to go and right away you can see a new canvas appear and it is pretty small like right off the bat but trust me all you have to do is just hit the zoom in button right here this little magnifying glass make sure that you're on the plus button right here tap it like once or twice and you should be good to go i tapped it twice so it's a bit too much so i'll click the minus button now and then tap it once more and zoom out but yeah and we can t start talking about the background because of course when you are making a profile picture the first thing you want to start out with is going to be the background that it's going to be like based around if that makes sense and the cool thing about photo p is like i said before it's basically an online version of photoshop and by that i mean it literally has almost every tool available that photoshop has so like we have the gradient tool right here i can just click it drag around and just like try to make a cool pattern like for the background myself but personally i find there's way more fun finding random images off google images like um radial backgrounds or grunge backgrounds galaxy backgrounds and things like that and then try trying to modify them in photo p to like make them look better for your profile picture so I'm going to quickly hit Ctrl Z to like get rid of like what I just did and we're going to go to Google Images. Right here we can do the radial background which kind of like shows you a sunburst effect and you'll have a bunch of like cool different like pictures that you can choose from. Um, and then moving on from that we have the grunge backgrounds which honestly I'm not really a big fan of but for some reason they're very popular in like the Call of Duty community so I thought I'd show them anyways. The cool thing that Google has right here though is that you can actually um, uh, filter them by like the color that you want to pick. So if I hit green right here it will show me a bunch of green grunge backgrounds which honestly look way better than the ones that I just saw. And then after that we have the galaxy backgrounds which in my personal opinion look beautiful but it really does totally depend on like the kind of profile picture that you're going for. And then next up after that we have the gradient backgrounds and obviously I just like did a gradient in Photopea with like that red and black color but it really didn't look too cool and sometimes I feel like finding gradients off just Google Images looks way cooler because like this one right here honestly looks beautiful and I don't think I'd be able to remake it myself. But anyways I'm just go through Google Images and try like find a background picture that you want to use or like a different picture off of Google Images but let me quickly find one right now and we can continue the tutorial from there. I think I'll just use this one right here. Honestly, I think it looks fine. Um, I do know that the, like you can see these like little watermark things right here, like this little camera picture. And I think there's like some text right here, but honestly, that doesn't matter because the way that we're going to be modifying it in in uh, Photo P, you're probably not even notice that like after it's all said and done. So all I have to do is just right click it and hit save image as and just save it to your desktop or really wherever you want to save it. So I'll hit save right here and just let it download. And I think it's already done downloading. So we can just go back to Photo P now. And all you have to do from here is just open up your file explorer and look for it on your computer. All right, cool. So the cool thing about Photo P is like when you do find something on your file explorer, all you have to do is just click it and then just drag it into Photo P. And it literally will fill up your canvas, canvas completely. Or right? it might not fill it up completely. It might be something like this right here. And then you'll, all you have to do is literally just gra grab on the anchor points, and just drag it up until it fills it up completely. Um, the cool thing about Photo P though is like it does use the same kind of like um, hotkeys that Photoshop has. So like if you hold shift and then drag it up, it will keep the same proportions all the way through. But if I don't hold shift, then as you can see, like I can do all this kind of stuff, right? All you have to do from there, just like fill it up, uh, fill up the canvas completely. I can hit this little like checkbox thing right here and it will confirm like the placement and we should be good to go from there. All right, cool. So the first thing I want to do is actually go to the layer of our background right here and right click it and then hit blending options. So now you can see this like new window appear, which is going to be the layer style window. And we're going to go to color overlay, click that, and you'll see right away that the color changed for it. And yours is probably going to be like on 100% opacity. So basically what we want to do is like change the color around and maybe try like a red or something. And then hit OK right here. And then all I have to do is just like lo lower my tap up <laughs> opacity just a bit maybe like to 70 or like 80 or something like that right so that we can still see a bit of the background but like it's not looking like it was before like this to this i think this looks way cooler in my personal opinion i can hit okay here and now basically for the most part it's like a red background and something else that i want to do is actually go to filter and i'll go to blur and i'm gonna do a gaussian blur and something that i really like about this is we can still see that the, like the lines are in the background for the um radial like background but they're blurred out right now and i think it's a bit too blurred out right now so i'll bring it down to like maybe 
uh, like do it like a two, right? So if I uncheck the preview window right here, you can see what it was what it was like before. And if I check it again, now you can see it's like a bit more blurred out. And the reason why I did that is because one, it looks way cooler. And then two, it also helps us get rid of like the little watermarks that were like right here. But anyways, from there I can hit okay. And as you can see right away, we don't see any of those watermarks anymore. And it honestly looks way cooler. So yeah, now that we do have the background, honestly, the rest is totally up to you and like whatever you want to do for like your custom profile picture. The most common one that I usually see people do is like usually adding like a circle thing right here. And then they also add like a little letter or something that kind of like represents their name. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. But like I said before, play around with Photo P and try learning whatever you can and then try making like a really cool profile picture on your own time or maybe like a channel banner or whatever you want to do, right? So to actually get that circle that we see a lot of people often have, all you have to do is go right here to this rectangle tool and then hold on it and then you'll see the ellipse tool. So once you see the ellipse tool, just let go on that and click it once more. And now it will change to the ellipse tool inside the rectangle tool. So from there, we can literally go anywhere on our like little canvas right here. I'm just going to go to the bottom like right. Click down and then hold shift on your keyboard and then just start dragging it upwards. And now you can see a perfect circle will start to appear. And when we let go of it, you'll see it gets filled up in red or it might get filled up in a different color. I'm not too sure if it's just red because that's like my main color right here. But anyway, the first thing that we're going to do is go up here to the fill. Click that and then hit this little white X or like the red X button right here. And as you can see right away, our like filled red circle is gone. But then what we want to do is go to the stroke right here. Click on that and then click this red solid color or whatever the solid color is to the right of the, like this red X. Click that and then, then as you can see a red line appears like around our circle. And then from there we're going to hit the white button right here which is going to change it to a white color. And then from there we can also make the stroke bigger by clicking this and then also just dragging it up. And as you can see the stroke starts to get bigger and I think it looks much cooler when it is like a bit thicker. Pause <laughs> when it looks that way because honestly it just looks cooler personally. So I'll just make it like 15.8 and then from there we can click out of that and we should be good to go. And now you might be like, Moz, what are we going to do? It's like stuck on the top left corner of our screen. So all we have to do to fix that is go to edit and then go to free transform. And once you do that, you'll see a new like square appear like on top of the, um, uh, what was this? Like the ellipse or like the circle that we just created. And like I said before, the cool thing about Photopea is that it does have those guidance lines, right? So it will help us know that we have it perfectly centered. And it's kind of hard to see right now because our background is red, but I can see it right now. It's perfectly centered. And the cool thing about Photo P2, like I said before, is it does have the same Photoshop hotkeys, right? So if we want to make the circle bigger without like moving it around too much, all you have to do is hold the Alt key on your keyboard, which is to the left of the space bar. And just click on any of the anchor points, just start dragging it upwards. And as you can see, the circle starts growing from all the angles, like every four, all four sides of the square. And I think this is honestly a perfect size for like the circle to be. So we can hit the checkbox right here. And right now we do have a circle, but personally, I think it looks a bit too boring. So, so let's just go ahead and right click on the little layer for the circle and then go to blending options. And then from there, we'll see the same layer style window appear. And from here, we can go to outer glow and change the color to black because I think it's going to look super sick when we make it black. Click OK right here. Change the blend mode from screen to normal. Change the opacity or opacity to 100 percent. Add a uh, maybe like a five spread and then maybe like a yeah, there you go. You guys can see right away. I changed it to like 19. Now we have a much cooler looking circle. Uh, so we're going to do that. Hit OK. And as you can see, now we have our circle and it looks perfectly fine in my personal opinion. All right, cool. So now that we do have our background and we also have like the little circle thing that we see so many people use, we do have to add our text, right? Because what is a profile picture without like a single like letter logo or whatever like we see a lot of people doing? So the thing that we have to do right now is actually go to the type tool, which is like this little T button right here. Click on that and then from there just click anywhere on your screen. I highly recommend clicking on like the top left because then it won't like interfere with like the circle that we already have and you will see automatically like the uh, little line appear for like whatever like font you or like uh, the text that you're about to type in. Um, you can actually make the line bigger or smaller by like um, just adjusting the size from here. So let's just make it um, let's just make it like 103 for now. Right. And then from there all I have to do is just type in whatever like letter I want to use. So I'm going to do M because that's like my the like Moz starts with M. Right. Um, but as you can see right away, it's like up here. So I'm going to hit the checkbox right here. Go to edit, go to free transform. Just like try bringing it down a bit more because um, obviously we can't do much from there when it's up there. Right. So I'll hit the checkbox again. And now we're going to go ahead and go back to the text tool. Click on the text file right here or like the little layer right here. And then it'll let us like edit it again. And now what we want to do is actually hit control A to like select it all. And then let's go ahead and like play around with the fonts because that font honestly looks ugly, right? So let's just go ahead and look for something that we might like. And you can literally just click on a bunch of random ones until it like it'll like automatically like adjust with whatever you click and it will like show you like a preview of it. If you like it, you can keep it. And if you don't, you can just go ahead and keep looking. So let's just go ahead and like look for something that I end up liking. Um, wait, actually, these are kind of cool. These Kamika, I'm not too sure to say this, but let's just try like Kamika display. Yeah, honestly, like this looks perfectly fine, in my opinion. So yeah, that looks fine. OK, so I'm going to highlight that again. Go up here and change the color to white because I think that's going to look perfect with like the circle that we have. 
hit the checkbox right here go to edit go to free transform because obviously like this is just way too small for like our logo right like imagine a circle this big then this and then the logo is like this small that just wouldn't make any sense right so we want to edit we want to free transform and now we can hold alt and just drag the anchor point until it starts getting bigger yeah honestly this looks perfectly cool and now one thing i'm gonna do is i'll let go of alt but now our like little uh cursor changes to like a I don't even know what this is called, but basically I can like kind of tilt it a bit because I think that's gonna look way cooler. I'll just drag it until it's like centered. It'll just look out for the red guideline things. And there you go. So I can hit the checkbox right here. And that's basically it for a profile picture. But you might be like, Moz, this looks ugly. The M doesn't even stand out. So that's a great point. All we have to do for that is do the exact same thing that we did with the circle. Go to the layer, right click it, go to blending options, go and then you'll see the layer style thing up here. So we'll go to outer glow. And it will automatically, I believe, copy the exact same settings that you had for the um, the circle. Because, like, as you can see right away, it's already at 6 and 25. And I believe that's exactly what we did for the circle. So, we can leave it as is. And, of course, if you want to change it up however you want to, feel free, feel free to do it. Like, you can change the color to, I don't know, yellow if you want to. That looks awful, though. Please don't do that. But anyway, hit OK from here. Hit OK from here. And honestly, guys, that's really it. This is a very basic video on how to make a free pro how to make a free profile picture for sites like YouTube, Twitter, Discord, really whatever like site you want to use this on. Um, of course, the last step that you have to do is go to File, then go to um, Export As, then save it as a PNG on your desktop. You uh, make sure that your quality is at 100% because of course we want to get the best quality out of this profile picture that we can. So from there, just make sure you hit save and just save it on your desktop or wherever you want to save it. And yeah, so now that I do have it saved on my computer, I can just click it right here. And as you can see, it does open up. So just save this in like your pictures, your documents or like a YouTube folder or really whatever you want to like save it to. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did and you guys want to see more videos like this, then please do hit that like button. It really does go a long way in helping me like know what to make in my next videos. And also please do hit that subscribe button if this is like your first time ever watching me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.